astigmatism results in a refractive state where there is no distortion-free vision at any distance. It results from a toric surface which refracts incident parallel light into a conoid, unlike a spherical surface that refracts incident light into either a converging or diverging cone of light. Some basic background facts about refracting surfaces. A positive spherical surface will create a cone of convergence bringing the incident light into a point focus. However, it will suffer from an aberration called the spherical aberration, which will cause the light from the periphery to come to focus in front of the central or paraxial light beam. This is because the peripheral rays will strike the surface at a greater angle of incidence, and hence, according to Snell's law, that governs refraction at a surface, it will bend more. Spherical aberration is a fourth order aberration and can be measured only by aberometers. The average normal spherical aberration generated by the normal human cornea is about plus 20 to 30 microns. This aberration is neutralized by the normal human crystalline lens which has a negative spherical aberration. The impact of spherical aberration is largely reduced by the pupil which controls the entry beam of light, thereby cutting off peripheral rays. However, in mesopic viewing conditions and in patients with a large resting pupillary diameter, spherical aberrations can become bothersome. If the peripheral rays focus in front of the paraxial or central rays, it creates a positive spherical aberration and if they focus behind, a negative spherical aberration is created. To counteract spherical aberration, modern optical lenses, whether they be diagnostic lenses like the 90D lens or those lenses incorporated into equipment like the slit lamp optics or some intraocular lenses are created with an aspheric surface. In an aspheric lens, the curvature gradually and progressively flattens towards the periphery. Such a surface, which is steeper in the center and flatter in the periphery, is known as a prolate surface. Most normal corneas have a prolate surface as opposed to an oblate surface, which is flatter in the center and steeper in the periphery as occurs in a post LASIK cornea above and which resembles a donut is called a torus. An optical section of this torus will have a toric surface. In a toric surface, the curvature of the various meridia are not equal and resolve in the majority of cases into a steep and a flat meridian which are usually at right angles to each other. When a beam of light gets refracted at a toric surface, it forms a conoid with two points of focus. Now this is known as the Sturm's conoid. The Sturm's conoid helps to explain the various types of astigmatic refractive errors. In this conoid that represents refraction through a toric surface with a steeper horizontal meridian and a flatter vertical meridian, we see that the horizontal rays come to focus first at the first focal line. At this point, an image of the conoid, if caught on a screen, will manifest as a vertical line as the horizontal rays have come to a focus. If the screen represented the retina, then the type of astigmatism at this point will be a simple hypermetropic astigmatism as the horizontal rays are focused and the vertical rays focus beyond this point. At any point in front of this point will represent a compound hypermetropic astigmatism as neither the vertical or the horizontal rays are focused. In addition, the cross section of the conoid at any point anterior to the first focal point will be vertically oval, 
becoming progressively narrow um, till it becomes a vertical line. At the second focal line, the vertical rays come to a focus while the horizontal rays will be divergent having already come to a focus at the first focal line. If the retina was at the second focal line, then the type of astigmatism manifested will be a simple myopic astigmatism at all points beyond this focal line will manifest compound myopic astigmatism. Between the first and the second focal line, since one meridian has already come to focus, while the other is yet to do so, a mixed astigmatism will be manifested. At the midpoint between the first and the second focal line is a plane where the divergent horizontal beam and the convergent vertical beam will show equal virgins creating a perfect circle on cross section called the circle of least confusion which creates a plane, a plane of least distortion of vision for the astigmatic patient. This also corresponds to the spherical equivalent of the refraction which is the spherical correction plus half the cylindrical correction. Based on the Sturm's conoid, a toric surface can generate five distinct type of refractive astigmatism which are simple myopic astigmatism, simple hypermetropic, compound myopic astigmatism, compound hypermetropic astigmatism and mixed astigmatism. In addition, astigmatism can be further categorized as regular astigmatism if the two meridia are at right angles to each other and irregular astigmatism where the two meridia are not at right angles. Regular astigmatism is further subdivided into with the rule, against the rule and oblique and irregular astigmatism is further subdivided into regularly irregular and irregularly irregular where the two meridians are not at right angles to each other. In irregularly irregular astigmatism which is quite rare, there are multiple curvatures occurring within a single meridian. Irregular astigmatism usually results from scarring or pacification of the cornea as well as in corneal diseases like keratoconus. And generally speaking, regular astigmatism is the most common type of astigmatism. The two most common types of regular astigmatism are with the rule astigmatism, in which the vertical meridian is steeper than the horizontal, and against the rule astigmatism, where the horizontal meridian is steeper than the vertical. The meridia can be at right angles to each other and they can be at 90 or 180 degrees or within 15 degrees on either side of this which means vertical meridian actually lies between 75 to 150 degrees and the horizontal meridian could be between 165 to 15 degrees. Usually with the rule astigmatism occurs in younger individuals and against the rule astigmatism occurs in older people and in middle ages the astigmatism could be neutral. 95 to 97 percent of regular astigmatism is four diopters or less which is why most companies that manufacture toric intraocular lenses have an inventory of up to four diopters and if you need to correct more than this you need to go for the extended range. Oblique astigmatism occurs when the two meridia are at right angles but they are more than 15 degrees away from 90 to 180 degrees. The most important reason why we need to differentiate between regular which is also known as orthogonal astigmatism and irregular astigmatism also known as non-orthogonal is that the non-orthogonal astigmatism cannot be corrected with spectacles soft contact lenses or toric intraocular lenses and can be only corrected with rigid gas permeable contact lenses. Non-orthogonal astigmatism cannot be measured by keratometry and can be detected and measured only by corneal topography. The standard device that measures corneal astigmatism is the keratometer. The dioptric power of the cornea is arrived 
by subtracting the posterior corneal surface diopteric power which has a value of roughly minus 5 diopters from the power of the anterior corneal surface which has a value of about 48 diopters. Since the keratometric systems can only measure the anterior curvature of the cornea by measuring Purkinje image 1 of two points which are 3.2 millimeters apart and hence some compensation has to be made to factor in the diopteric power of the cor posterior corneal surface. This compensation actually is by a reduced keratometric refractive index of the cornea. The corneal refractive index is actually 1.376 while the keratometric refractive index is 1.3375. This keratometric refractive index is used in the conversion of the radius of curvature measurements which we actually measure on keratometry into the uh, dioptric power of the cornea. Now we know that the dioptric power of the cornea is given by the formula n2 minus n1 divided by r where n2 is the refractive index of the cornea, n1 is the refractive index of air which is 1 and r is the refractive uh, is the radius of curvature of the anterior corneal surface in meters. Now working our way through this we can see that 337.5 divided by the radius of curvature will give you the dioptric power of the cornea. The keratometric refractive index has been chosen uh, such that a radius of curvature of 7.5 actually corresponds to a corneal dioptric power of 45 diopters and that's how um, the keratometric refractive index of 1.3375 has been arrived at. The limitations of the keratometer are as follows. It assumes that the cornea is spherocylindrical with regular corneal astigmatism and hence can give erroneous readings or totally miss irregular astigmatism. Secondly, it assumes a fixed relationship between the anterior and posterior corneal curvatures which is the reason why keratometric values are unreliable in a patient who has undergone laser refractive procedures. Now this ends part 1 of the lecture on aligning with astigmatism. In part 2, I will be discussing about incisional astigmatic corrections, posterior corneal toracity and astigmatic correction with toric eye ovals. Thank you for your attention.